My name is Michael Sheehan and I practice in Indiana and we're here with Dr. Jill Fowler talking about the contact allergen of the year. So Dr. Fowler, can you tell me what made cobalt jump to the top of the list? Well, you know, Michael, um, we've had a lot of different allergens of the year over the years uh, and, and I think we've hit a lot of the big allergens in the past. And a lot of, we used to think maybe cobalt wasn't as important an allergen, let's say, as as nickel or gold or other metals or other other the, the many allergens we test. Uh, but in the last year or two, there's been quite a bit of new information that's come out about cobalt. Uh, there's a new test. There's a, a for our cobalt in materials. There's a, there's uh, there's some other new things that we've learned about cobalt, and, and it seemed to be worthwhile to look at those new things and revisit some of the old uh, uh, things that we knew about cobalt in the past. Yeah, well, and kind of to that point, the paradigm I think has shifted a little bit with cobalt. We used to think a lot about cobalt with nickel. You know, they were always kind of um, co-reactors and we thought of them in groups. Has that changed some? That, that's changed some. I mean, we still often see uh, cobalt and nickel reacting together. Um, maybe it's because they're in some of the same places uh, uh, where people are exposed. Uh, so maybe from jewelry or metal objects, tools they're working with, other, other metal sources. I think uh, in, in the earth, cobalt often coexists with nickel. And so you're mining nickel and you get some cobalt in there maybe or vice versa. And so, um, so I think we still have some of that connection. Uh, but I think now we've expanded on beyond that to some of the new areas where, where we're thinking about cobalt being important. Yeah. So kind of maybe we can talk a little bit more to that. What are some things that, that people may not be aware of that we are seeing cobalt in? So I think the biggest new thing that, that, was, uh, that was taught to us by our Scandinavian colleagues a couple of years ago uh, is cobalt in leather. And, and so it turns out that um, we used to think, of course, and still understand that leather is often tanned with chromium. So that was the big allergen that we thought about with, with, with leather dermatitis or potential leather shoe dermatitis or exposure to other leather sources. And, and so they had a case <clears throat> where there was a fellow who bought a new leather sofa and uh, he was allergic to cobalt and nothing else was positive and, and he swore that the sofa bothered him and eventually they tested the leather in the sofa and found it to contain cobalt. And I think, to, me, to my knowledge, that was the first time we realized that. And so, um, and it turns out, I guess, that probably cobalt, the, the cobalt is in the dyes in the leather. Um, but at any rate, then they went and looked at a bunch of shoes. They bought a, a 20 pairs of shoes from different places in Scandinavia and, but the, that were sourced from around the world. And I think every one of those pairs of shoes had cobalt in, that, in the leather. So now we understand that <clears throat> probably, that, that's probably gonna be a very significant source uh, of cobalt exposure. Um, another thing kind of in parallel with that, uh, uh, but certainly on a different uh, approach, is cobalt in metal objects like jewelry. Uh, and, and so uh, some other investigators literally bought hundreds of pieces of costume jewelry uh, and tested them for cobalt uh, along with nickel and other metals. And, and it turns out that jewelry that looks sort of dark colored, so it's metal, but rather than shiny, bright jewelry, uh, it, it's kind of a darkish hue to it, uh, black or brownish, kind of a dark hue, uh, is more often like, it's likely to contain cobalt. Uh, so, so those were a couple of the new things that we've learned in the last uh, year or two. What about textile dyes? Is there, and textiles in general, other than leather, are there links to that at all? Um, you know, the, so the, from the textile dye standpoint, cobalt has, I think, been used for, for a long time as something called a mordant, which is uh, helps the dye hold on to the fabric. Um, and, and so I think occasionally we see that, but probably not as much as in the leather. And then um, we now have a test kit, right, for cobalt? That's, that's one of the other big things. I think one of the main, we've already covered a couple of the main important new points about cobalt. And to me, that's, that's the, the next one. Um, we've had a nickel test kit, of course, for years. And now this cobalt spot test has been developed. Um, in, it's similar to the nickel test, if our viewers are familiar with that, where you take a, a chemical and apply it onto a Q-tip and then rub it on the metal object. Uh, and it turns, uh, in, instead of pink, which you get with nickel, it turns a yellowish orange color in the presence of cobalt. And it can be used to test uh, metal objects. It can be used even to test leather. Uh, I've seen it seen cut a piece of leather and put the solution in a in a little uh, little petri dish and uh, and show the show the show the color as the cobalt leaches out. So so now that we we know cobalt's a little more important as an allergen, and now we know we can test for it. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Very